everybody, JC here with another TNI Toy Review. And today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Iron Man vs. Mega Man X 2 pack from Hasbro. Now this set is being done in the 3.75 inch scale and is being offered as a Target Store exclusive. It comes packaged in this window box with the figures clearly displayed. Up at the top you've got the Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite logo and images of the characters from the video game. And then down below you've got the names of the characters and it also says this series is part of the Marvel Gameverse. Now this is the only figures in the series so far and I have not heard anything about Hasbro continuing this line. Though I think it would be kind of cool if they did. On one side of the packaging you have an image of Mega Man and then on the other side you have an image of Iron Man. On the back of the packaging you have a look at both figures and a brief bio in multiple languages. Alright, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside the packaging. Now the only accessory that comes in this set is this blast effect piece for Mega Man X and it's done with a semi-translucent plastic and it's got pretty good sculpting detail. It's done with a green plastic and it gets uh, more clear towards the end here. And you've got this little peg on the end and what you do is he's got a hole at the end of his arm cannon which is on his right arm and you just plug that in and it fits nice and tight. And it's got a good weight but it doesn't actually weigh the figure down or weigh the arm down so I like that. The joints are tight on the figure so you know you can have him hold it straight out and it looks like he's actually firing his cannon like you see in the video game. And they've also included this cardboard backdrop in the packaging that features uh, a city. So if you want to kind of recreate a video game diorama type deal, they've given you that. Wait, hold on one second. Just one second. Okay. Don't want to get in trouble with Disney. But anyway, like I said, they've given you this cardboard insert. So if you want to kind of recreate scenes from the video game, you can. So for the figures themselves, starting with Iron Man, this is basically just a reissue of an older Iron Man movie figure. And while at first, when I first saw this, I was a little disappointed in that. And then I looked at the actual primary armor that you see in the video game. And this is actually a pretty good representation of that. So I guess I really can't blame Hasbro too much for using this figure, even though it technically is really an Iron Man movie figure and not a video game figure. But again, if you look at the actual armor, the images from the game, this looks very similar to that. So you've got the circle arc reactor or unibeam, whatever you want to call it. And he's got the maroon color, the darker maroon. I couldn't find my movie figure to give you an actual comparison, but based on my memory, I believe this is a little bit shinier maroon color. And you've got the silver up here, these two little silver dots on his chest. You've got some line work sculpted in. And then you've got the gold throughout the figure. And you've got the white eyes with the blue tint to it on the face mask with the gold plate, face plate. you got some sculpting detail on the back. You've got a hole here on the back as well. But again, even though this is just basically a reissue of an older figure, I think it actually works pretty well for the video game. Now with the Mega Man figure, this is actually my first ever Mega Man figure I've ever owned. So I don't have much to give you a comparison by. I do believe there are probably better high-end figures, but those will also cost you more. Overall, I think Hasbro's done a pretty good job here. I like the metallic red they use on the part, red part here on the helmet, and I think they've captured the look of Mega Man with the wide eyes, and he's got a good skin tone there on the face. And he's got this darker blue with the lighter blue color, and then he's got this circle, uh, black circle on the sides of his helmet with the inner red circle. So overall, pretty nice detailing on the helmet. And then for the rest of the figure, it's just this darker blue and lighter blue with some black mixed in. You do get some marbleization effect going on throughout the figure with the darker blue portions, which are pretty shiny. But I don't think it looks too bad. And overall, the paint applications on this are halfway decent. I won't say they're fantastic, but they're not horrible either. Okay, so the Iron Man figure stands about four and a quarter inches tall and the Mega Man figure stands just a little bit under four inches, over three and three quarter inch, but a little bit under four inch. So Iron Man is taller, though I think Iron Man should maybe be a little bit taller than Mega Man is here to be in perfect scale. But overall, I don't think it's too bad. So for articulation, starting with Iron Man, he can turn his head to the left and to the right. And he can look down just a tiny bit, but not too much. And he can look back a little bit more than down, but again, not too much. Really can't get him in very good flight poses, unfortunately. 
arms are attached with your standard ball hinge joint. Now these shoulder uh, pads are actually removable. They just pop on. So when you do the arm up too much, they're going to pop off. So just be wary of that. But again, they will pop back on. So with the shoulder pads on, you can get the arm out about that much. And then you do have good rotation there at the arm. He has a single hinged elbow, but you do have rotation at the elbow and he can bend his elbow about that much. And then with the wrist, you can rotate, but no hinges, so you don't get much in the way of up or down movement there. You've got a midsection joint, so you've got rotation there at the midsection. You can pivot to the left and the right, but really can't crunch down and can only look back a little bit there at the midsection. Does not have a waist swivel. Legs are attached with those ball hinge joints, so depending on how you turn the legs, um, you can get them to do the splits pretty good. You can get the leg forward about that much and you can do the legs back about that much and then you get a thigh swivel up high there where the leg meets that ball joint. He's got a double hinge knee, so good bending there at the knee and then hinges on the feet. You get a little up and down movement. This uh, piece of the lower leg comes down over the feet so that does limit the feet movement a great deal and you can rotate back and forth a little bit, but again, it's limited by those armor pieces. And then two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. So articulation on Mega Man, again, you can turn the head to the left and to the right. He really doesn't have much in the way of down movement or back movement though. Again, you can pivot to the left and to the right a little bit there. Arms attached with your standard ball hinge joint there at the shoulder, so you can get his arm out good. And then he's got good rotation there. He's got a single hinged elbow, so he can only bend his elbow about that much because this uh, piece here on the lower arm kind of limits that movement, kind of covers the joint a bit. You do have rotation there at the elbow, and then you have some rotation at the wrist, but no hinges on the hands, so no up or down movement. You don't even have a hand on the right arm, just the gun cannon. And again, you've got that rotation there at the, at the elbow. He's got a midsection joint, so you've got some rotation there at the midsection. He can crunch down about that much there, and he can actually look back pretty good there at that midsection joint, though you do get that hole that starts to show up if you haven't looked back too much. He does not have a waist swivel. Legs are attached with ball joints, so he can do the splits about that much. He can get his leg forward about that much, and he can do his leg back about that much. And then there's no thigh swivel, and he has a single hinge knee, so he can bend his knee about that much. And you also have rotation there at the knee. And then with the feet, you've got hinges, but you really don't have much movement with the feet. You can only do it back and forth a little bit. You can also rock it a little bit, but these pieces come down over the feet, and that again limits the feet movement a great deal. And then you have two peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Okay, so that's my review. So overall, I think this is a decent set. Now, it's maybe a little harder to justify if you already have the Iron Man movie figure, but if not, I think this is one worth checking out, especially if you're a Mega Man fan. Now again, I'm sure there are better, higher end Mega Man figures out there than this one, but this entire set only costs $20. You're getting two figures, and the Iron Man figure is not a bad one. Again, it's just a reissue of the movie figure, but does look very similar to the armor you see in the video game. Now this set is a Target exclusive and is available now. We'll have a full image gallery up at MarvelousNews.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.